If we want to talk about the relative strengths of acids and bases, um, that's kind of a broad topic, so we'll just jump in and start giving specific examples. If I have a what's considered a strong acid, because it's a strong electrolyte, it will produce essentially 100 percent in, in an aqueous solution, you will get hydronium ions. In an aqueous solution, a strong acid will 100 percent produce hydronium ions. Um, there will also be whatever anion is present based on what formula you have for your strong acid, but the H3O plus is the product when you have a strong acid, and for that reason, we consider H3O plus to be the strongest acid possible because any strong acid is going to essentially revert to H3O pluses in an aqueous solution. Likewise, any strong base is going to 100 percent produce hydroxide ions. For that reason, we say that OH minus is the strongest base possible in an aqueous solution because any strong base is going to be hydroxide ions. So these are considered the strongest acid and the strongest base when you're talking about an aqueous solution. So, and, and we don't have to be talking about an aqueous solution to be using the Bronsted-Lowry definition, but in general chemistry, we almost always are in an aqueous solution. Next year, when you go on to organic chemistry, you'll do a lot of things that are not in an aqueous solution, and so you have to, you'll have other strong acids and strong bases in that case. But for us, for this semester, we're going to be in aqueous solutions, and so those are our strongest acids and bases based on the fact that our strong acids and bases are essentially going to produce 100 percent of those. Now if we want to look at a conjugate acid-base reaction, and I'm just going to write a generic one. If A is my Bronsted-Lowry acid in this reaction, he has to have a hydrogen in order to donate it, and we'll call our Bronsted-Lowry base B. If this is in equilibrium with their conjugates, HA being the Bronsted-Lowry acid, will donate his proton to B, being the Bronsted-Lowry base, and so A will become A minus, he'll have a negative charge because he's giving away an H plus, and B will become BH with a plus charge because he's accepting an H plus. So this is the conjugate base of my Bronsted-Lowry acid, BH plus is my conjugate acid of my Bronsted-Lowry base. In this generic weak acid, weak base reaction, I have conjugate pairs. Whichever side of my reaction that has the stronger acid and base, that will be the side that will proceed farther to the other side. And that sounded a little weird. Um, for example, if HA is a stronger acid than BH plus, this one would be the weaker acid, by stronger, what we mean is that it is more likely to produce BH plus than BH plus is likely to produce HA. So a stronger acid is one that provides a more forward reaction. If HA is my stronger acid in this example, what I will find is that B will be a stronger base than the A minus. So B will be stronger then the conjugate base on the other side, this will be the weaker base. I will always notice this sort of pattern if I start comparing strengths of the acids on either side and the bases on either side. In that case, what I find is that the reaction favors the weaker side, which means the reaction goes further toward the side where there is a, the weaker pair. Um, in terms of the equilibrium of this reaction, we might say the equilibrium lies to the right. If my weaker pair are on the left, then I would say that the equilibrium lies to the left. So the reaction favors the weaker pair because the stronger pair are going to proceed with the reaction more so than the weaker pair. All right, the next thing we want to look at is we want to look at strengths, relative strengths of acids, and we're going to focus on acids for a while looking at the periodic table. I think one of the best ways to look at this is in terms of actually looking at the periodic table while we go through this. So make sure you've got a periodic table in front of you. 
There are six strong acids. Some tables include a seventh one, but there are six strong acids, and I'm going to put them over here. All right, these are considered strong acids because they proceed essentially 100% to produce the hydronium ion when you put them in water. And if we look at a group at them a group at a time, we can see some basic trends while looking at the periodic table. As I look at this periodic table and as I look down the group that is the halogens, I see some of my strong acids. If I focus on the binary acids, these are the acids that contain hydrogen and one other element, so binary acids. I see that HCl, HBr, and HI are strong acids, but something that I may recall is that HF is a weak acid. HF is a weak acid because when you put it in water, it's a weak electrolyte. But HCl, HBr, and HI are strong acids. So if I have binary acids and I move down the column, what I do is I increase the base strength, the, the acid strength, not the base strength. As I move down the column, I increase the acid strength. So binary acid strength, if, as you're looking at binary acids, increases as you move down the column. What we want to look at next is we want to look at binary acids as you move across a row on a periodic table. If I look at the top row across on the periodic table, for example, nitrogen to oxygen to fluorine, we're omitting the noble gases. They don't tend to form compounds. They tend to be uh, monatomic atoms anyway, and so they're not part of this conversation. But as I look at my binary acids, the binary acid that forms with nitrogen is H3N. The binary acid that forms with water is H2O. And the binary acid that forms with fluorine is HF. Well, HF is definitely an acid. This is hydrofluoric acid. It's a weak acid, but it is an acid. Water can act as a Bronsted-Lowry acid, but it can also act as a Bronsted-Lowry base. And H3N, you might recognize a little better as NH3 instead, and this is actually a weak base. So as I move left to right in a row, I get to stronger and stronger acids across a row the strength increases. So I increase the strength of my binary acids as I move left to right. We also can see that trend in this, in this next row, H2S and HCl. As I move from left to right, H2S is a weak acid, HCl is actually a strong acid. So binary acid strength, we have a trend in both the groups, the columns, as well as the periods or the rows. If I look at next at acids that contain oxygens, let's look at these sorts of acids. We call them oxyacids or oxoacids. We also see some trends based on the, both the periodic table and the presence of oxygens. Okay, when looking at my oxyacids, the oxygen containing acids, um, first, let's look at all other things being equal. Let's look at the atom in addition to the oxygens. Let's, for example, compare the oxyacids or the oxoacids in this row. We want to compare apples to apples, so let's compare them with the same numbers of oxygens. That would be H3PO4, H2SO4, and HClO4. Notice that we do need different numbers of hydrogens because of the charges on the polyatomic ions. The phosphate ion is minus three, the sulfate ion is minus two, and the chlorate, perchlorate ion is minus one. So that dictates how many hydrogens we'll need, but all of these have four oxygens, and the element often referred to this as XO4, whereas we have as many hydrogens as we need, but the XO4 where the X changes, in this case it goes across the row. As I move from left to right in this trend, as I move from left to right across the row, the strength of the acid increases. Um, the reason why the strength of this acid increases is because as I move to the right, the electronegativity of this central atom increases. Electronegativity is defined as the pull of the electrons in a shared bond. They're going to pull the electrons away from the 
oxygens, which pull more electrons away from the hydrogen, which is attached to the oxygen, and the hydrogen is more likely to be donated. Bronsted Lowry acids are species that donate the proton, and so that's the reason why we see that trend. Um, th by the way, and I forgot to mention it, that's also the same reason why we see the trend as we move left to right for the binary acids, because as I move to the right, I'm getting increasingly more electronegative, and therefore the H is more likely to be donated. We don't see that trend in the up and down direction with the binary acids, and again, I forgot to mention it, because as you move up and down, you also change the size of the atom drastically. As you move down the periodic table, the size of the atom gets larger and larger and larger because it has one more energy shell, one bigger quantum number, n, principal quantum number, and so the larger these atoms are, the more they're able to stabilize themselves after they've donated the proton, and so the proton is much more likely to be donated as I move down, not because of electronegativity, but because of the size of the ion that's left over. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. So back with the oxy acids or the oxo acids, as I move left to right, as long as I have the same number of oxygens, because of the increase in electronegativity of that central atom, my strength of my acid will increase. Now let's compare what happens when I go up and down on the periodic table. Again, we want to stick to a column. We want to try to compare apples to apples, and I'm only going to put acids that are real. As I look to compare HiO4, HBrO4, and HClO4, again, same number of oxygens. I want to compare apples to apples. As I look in this column, as I move up from left to right on my list, but I'm going to higher and higher on the periodic table, the strength of the acid increases. HClO4 is actually a strong acid. It's one of the strong acids on our list. HiO4 and HBrO4 are not considered strong acids. Why is that? Again, because this central atom, as it becomes increasingly more electronegative, it's able to stabilize what's left over, and it pulls on what's left over more, so the H plus is more likely to be donated. One last set of comparisons. What if I'm comparing apples to apples, and I'm looking at something like HNO2 versus HNO3? I have the same central atom, the same X. What's different here is I have a different number of oxygens. And in general, the more oxygens, the stronger the acid. So d between HNO2 and HNO3, nitrous acid and nitric acid, nitric acid is stronger. And it is indeed one of our strong acids. Nitrous acid is not. If I compare H2SO3 to H2SO4, H2SO4, sulfuric acid, is one of our strong acids. Sulfurous acid, H2SO3, is not a strong acid. Strength increases with more oxygens. I could do the same thing with the chlorines, but I think you get the picture.